All right, take two. The sound went bad on me. It happens in, in YouTube from time to time. Never exactly sure why that happens, but it happens. And so let's reset everything. We'll go back to the website. Uh, we will repost today's link. Link, space, paste, shift, link. Um, <laughs> uh, link, enter, edit settings open a new window update and update so that's that let's go fix this https colon slash dash jolly ra roger ukulele dot com and then i'm supposed to show up tweet okay so we tweet all right so second time through hopefully will be a charm uh all right, everybody's rolling back in. <laughs> yeah, that happens. You guys know it's just one of those things that we go through around here. We're lucky to have YouTube, uh, but its overall service sometimes is just wipes out for no reason. Nobody knows why. Nobody, you can't care, right? You just start over. <laughs> All right, Mo Beta. Yeah, when I, you know what it is. When I, as soon as I start, it's almost always happens when I'm singing, right? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> my voice has the ability to bring down youtube oh, it's very exciting <laughs> oh my gosh well here we go let's wait just a second and we'll start again um let's see. of course i tweeted it so now i now everybody's going to the wrong link oh well i delete that one tweet and restart let's see here um wait where am i there here i am all right Tweet number two, Reed Davis. All right. Okay, good. We're back in business. All right. So, <laughs> sorry, everyone. All right. Uh, we ran, Where were we at? We were running through the chords. Um, chords work. I was just mentioning uh, probably a good idea to um, think about. The A minors in here are not necessary. They just sound a little cooler if you can do them. And then, all right. So, let's run through the melody. Let's get that part figured out. Uh, it came up on a midnight clear is what we're working on. Websites, jollyrogerukulele.com. And that's what I always say. All right. So, um, Melody. Since your first note's a three and your next note's a seven, I'm starting way up here, right? Most of this song is going to be uh, in uh, probably second position, but uh, we're going to be going up to sevens a lot. And so probably third position is actually going to make more sense. Uh, and then you're going to reach down for your twos. As I'm scanning through it, I don't see any ones. And so, um, so really that third position allow that third position allows you a, a better chance of getting your sevens and your twos in. So possibly uh, a one place to think about. All right. From the top one, two, note there. Okay, go. Okay, ended up in second position. Give us some vibrato. And then repeat. I would say on those long notes, those tied notes, they're all worth five full beats. So you probably really do want to count in your head. Two, three, one. Two. Otherwise, you're going to come in early. Okay. Um, let's see. Did we get through enough of the chords where we feel good about that? I think we're okay on the chords. Um, I don't think there was anything in here other than the B chord. 
right? Which we don't get to play often on four with the pin. That sounds really cool. All right. Uh, all right. Let's go. Tafuke. Walk through every single bit of it, and then we will talk. Okay. First notes of three, probably index finger. Pinky on seven, strum. Index on two. Pull your index back up to the all fives. I don't see any way to get that clean uh, without just dropping your full bar on here. And then you're going to have to pretty quickly go to your F or your C chord with your pinky up here. And then B minor, just a regular hold. Index finger up. Again. Already holding the three down. Go to your C chord. Ring finger for the two, pinky for the three. Add your bar, probably switch out for your middle finger. Pinky on five, slide it up, hit seven, and then slide it right back to the five. Add your G D chord on there. Three, two, three. That's a half note. Let it ride. Then play all that stuff again. Two, fives. Regular C with the pinky. B minor, open, switch your one out uh, for your four, you hear that, Wah, that sounds so cool, and then C chord, add your A minor, you gotta quickly move to the D7, and then open, three, and then G chord to wrap it up. Let that last zero ride just a minute, um, uh, and then you're back to the sevens, um, and a bar on four, okay? That's my favorite chord on, on ukulele. <laughs> there. And second favorite, okay? Strum it, and then opens. A nice E minor here. Hit the two. Hit the three. Slide up to seven. And then right back to five, add your D chord, slide back, play the two, open A7, hit the two, open, and then uh, D chord, two, three, two, and then a big three. play the whole thing second time through you skip 31 and 32 and you got a couple of g chords there to wrap it up now um what i would suggest um as you're going through this is when you get to these fives right five 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 and then you got to get to the other c chord with your three you can this three is way up here as an eight on the second string. So theoretically, you can, if you don't like going, which I do like, you could just hold your fives, put your pinky on eight, and you get the same thing, but you can keep your fives in one spot. So if you wanted to rewrite that as, uh, instead of 2013 as 558, um, you can um, again I don't think I don't think it matters that much what, one way or the other I think what matters is your playability I like the low, low C with the pinky I just think it sounds pretty um, but I do get it that you're like you have to stop everything to go get that chord where you could do this not quite as full of a sound but you could that way you can at least keep those fives rolling these two fives playing along the whole time kind of works as a um, uh, just just a little bit of um, just keeps that chord rolling through a little bit better. Morning, Linda. Um, all right. I think that's all I have to say about it came upon a minute. I clear. So let's go through it really slow. One, two. I did a bad job counting you in. Let me start again. One, two.
So first time through with my thumb, second time through with my claw, and um, I think the hardest part was holding on to the ukulele. <laughs> you guys that are baritone players, you already know this. You know, like Gary, you should have a strap on your ukulele. Um, I have one on the other one. I don't have one on this yet, and uh, I think I need to get one on there. Um, it sounds good, guys. I think the only thing I would change out is at measure 22 instead of the bar A7. I'd change it out to the 2020. Other than that, I think the piece of sheet music will hold its own up against anything else that we have. So um, let's let's make that a thing for tomorrow let's make sure it's sounding beautiful and then last thing i'd like to do today is run through your menuet suite uh and uh we yesterday we did the first part and the second part lovely on bear it is lovely right? <laughs> I, I don't know why we're surprised sometimes you're like oh gosh that sounds nice sounds beautiful right and not terribly hard to play enough to keep it enough to keep it interesting but it, it's it's uh it's fun all right let's grab your menuet suite we ended up yesterday at the end of th uh, measure 34 so we did the first part of the song which is two parts right we're going to play the first pay first part and then the, twice and then the second part twice now we're going to play the third part three twice and the fourth part twice and then um tomorrow we will go back to the uh, play the last part which is the same as the first part but we only play that once okay so uh today let's talk through measures 35 through 50 as well as measures 50 51 through 67, 68. And then um, tomorrow, uh, we'll play the whole thing top to bottom again. And remember, from 69 to the end, we only play that section once. Okay. So let's first, let's run through, starting at measure 35, um, well, how I'd like to play it, I'd like to go through and just make sure, since we talked about it last week, and, and maybe you're here, maybe you're not, but has this is a chance for you to um, play it in really two different ways. I wouldn't necessarily focus overly on the chords here um, because there's no 
um, lyrics to go with it. Um, if you want to hum the tune uh, as you're working on your chords, you can. But the chords in and of themselves work, are designed to help make sense of the tough uke portion of this. Um, I'm, what I want to do is I want to play the melody for those of you guys that are newer and you're still, you know, getting your your chops together. Uh, 35 through 50. I'm going to play the first time melody, and then I want to go back just what the repeat says. When I hit 50, I'm going to go back to 35. I'm going to play that section, Tough Uke, um, uh, through there. Then when we go on to the next page, you'll not play 50 twice. You skip over to 51. And then I will go back to playing melody from 52 through 67, and then go back and play um, the Tough Uke from 52 through 68 again the second time. Okay, so just as we we did yesterday i will play a melody and then tough you if you are a melody player and you're still getting your chops together just play it melody both times okay if you are a tough euchre and you're like yep i totally know what i'm doing um play it tough you play your thumb one time and then play your claw one time uh to make sure that you've got both skill sets uh, uh ready to go and um uh, there's a there's a note on every uh, there's a lot of notes and <laughs> I don't think you can I don't think you can painful you this one uh, at all so all right from the t um, from measure thirty five one time so I will play melody then tough melody then tough you will play whatever makes you happy how about that one two three. Two. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Measure 69 and goes right back to the basic to the uh, to the beginning. Okay, so that's a lot of music that we're going to be playing tomorrow. So when you get to tomorrow, the big thing about this piece is you gotta let your errors go. You just be like whatever, <laughs> because it doesn't stop. It doesn't let up. It's not gonna be. It's it never gonna relent on you. It, it just keeps coming and coming and coming at you. Um, Cindy says, hey, I could probably use one more week on this as well. Uh, let's see how we do tomorrow. Let's see how everybody feels tomorrow. Um, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't take it into next week. This is a legit piece of music. Um, and honestly, um, you've got the you the opportunity to be playing something really, really like surprising uh, on ukulele. And uh, so if, if you guys are up for that, you'll let me know. Um, I don't much, I don't, I guess I don't care one way or the other whether we continue this one or move on to something else that's kind of high level. I think. Uh, it has this sense of because it's baroque music it always will sound fine at christmas time anyway you know um, but it's really really um, a lot of music and so i would say i think probably the best thing i can do is just sort of turn you loose and let you review the whole thing um, uh, tomorrow we will play top to bottom and we'll do all the repeats as well so um, repeat each section twice except for the last section the fifth section and um, i would say Again, with a piece like this, when you're playing uh, in um, any type of um, – we have this tendency to have a really big struggle with letting mistakes be mistakes. Um, and this is the kind of music that you just – because you got a whole bunch more mistakes coming up further <laughs> down into the song. Let them go. Just let them go. I, I, every time I hit a bad note, I'm like, dang, got it. But I got to let it go because I got more notes. I got more notes to mess up coming up. And so just let yourself feel the rhythm. Keep keep with that steady pace. And I think it'll be really beautiful. Um, uh Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Vic says, "Reminds me of the last of Mohicans." <laughs> I don't. I, mean, I don't know if I. I think I, I'm trying to remember if I saw that movie. I, it had that. Uh, was that Daniel Day Lewis? If I remember right, I think I might have seen it. Um, yeah, and then I, like I said, yeah, I, Cindy and I agree. You can, you can call this a Christmas tune, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, Carol, see you tomorrow. Diane, sounds nice on the baritone. It does sound nice, right? Are the colors significant on the circle of this behind you? Um, are the, do the colors mean anything? No. This thing, it's, it's fascinating. This thing, um, because they do it upside down, um, I know why they did it upside down, but it's just not how I'm used to looking at things. So uh, C chord uh, here, um, I, the colors don't mean anything as far as i can tell i don't think i'll i'll look through it and see if they mean anything i think they just wanted it to be a little easier to read um but in terms of uh, we will be talking about this now for the rest of your lives um, a song like this where we're playing in g and then also the first part of it's in g and then the next part of it's over here in g minor which is um over here right so the first set of chords is likely to come from this grouping uh we're playing it in g okay? and if you go back to the beginning of the song dun dun i'm playing in uh oh well you guys um it's minuet in d for you guys so we roll over here so these are the chords you're probably going to see showing up uh and sure enough you're playing in the key of d uh, first chord that shows up is a G, right there in your little, right next door, right? Next chord that shows up, A7, right next door, right? And so that, in fact, the whole first section is just those three chords. Not a mistake. Bach knew what he was doing, right? Those sound pretty good together. I'll hang out there. You're like, oh, we're playing Baroque music. We're playing Johann Sebastian Bach. Not really. We're playing Christian Petzl, but uh, we're playing this super important music. Three chords. Right, all next to each other on the circle of fifths. Um, and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe those guys were not as smart as I thought. They're smart because they hide out the fact that all this stuff makes sense, right? Then in the second half of the song, we're going to D minor, and your D minor is hanging out right over here. Okay, so you put it on your D minor. 
And now we're going to the next thing. Your next chord is an A minor. Well, let's see. Where's that hanging out? That's that's right over here, not too far away. Okay. And then I got a G minor in there. Well, that's the nits buddy right there. And uh, uh, A seven. That's uh, that's going to be. Well, that's the A diminished. That's not it. Where's the A seven? Um, <laughs> Yeah, that would be clear over here, right? So what? Quay over there. So that's way out of the point. So that's a moment where it's probably going to sound quite a bit different than than uh, a lot of tension in that moment. So that's kind of what the circle of fifth does is help you understand how music fits together. Uh, the beginning of the song fits together just like you're a schoolgirl, and then the second half of the song starts to get a little bit more advanced, a little bit more intense. And so, yeah. Um, we'll talk about that more and more and more, especially those of you guys who like to sing. This thing um, does a really good job of staying underneath your voice and making you sound good. And then uh, we will be um, continually talking to you guys that like to sing. How do you transpose a song into a key that works with your voice better? So a little bit short class today, but you got plenty to work on tonight to get ready for tomorrow's concert. So you probably need a little time just to, outside of me, outside of listen to me make mistakes. Why don't you go make your own mistakes today? How about that? Uh, Let's see. Yeah, I don't think those colors mean anything, Cindy. Uh, uh, it's all just relative. So, uh, but I'll I'll go double check in there and see if they meant those to mean something. Uh, hey, Terry, have a great day. Ray, good to see you. You guys have a wonderful afternoon. Uh, I'll see some of you later, and I will see some of you tomorrow. And uh, have a great day.